management uh, floral studio based in LA. Hello everyone, hi! Me and this beautiful bearded Iris say, say happy, Friday. happy Friday. I hope, hope y'all had a great week. Um, so today we uh, wanted to put together a really sunny, a really happy floral arrangement to kick off the weekend. And oh, my mom just tuned in. Um, and we wanted to basically show you how to create something um, that is perfect for a coffee table or a dining table um, made out of florals and fruit that you can find at the bodega, at the market, at the grocery store, even just like foraging um, around your house. So um, follow along with me. Um, thank you to s someone who said that this is so wholesome. I, I really appreciate that. So, without further ado, let's get into kind of a little bit about me. Um, I'll answer some of the questions you've been sending in and we'll get into some flowers. So, Under New Management is a floral studio that is that creates loud, in-your-face, exciting, really emotional um, floral arrangements in the point of view of women, women of color, people of color, immigrants, and community members of the LGBTQ community. Now, that being said, we aren't afraid to be loud, we're not afraid to be in your face, and we just love celebrating life. So you'll see that a lot in our work and, um, and how we do things. So if you're just tuning in, we are going to be making a, he a Hello Sunshine themed um, floral arrangement using um, materials that you can just find at the bodega, foraging around town, um, ask your neighbors first if you're going to cut their flowers. Um, yeah, so let's, uh, let's take a peek on what we're going to be using today. So um, I have access to some really cool flowers, but these are materials that you can really just find around. Um, we are going to be using some balm tulips. These are some striped uh, tulips. We are going to be using some dogwood branches. Dogwood is in season right now. We are going to be using some ranunculus, some standard, some standard ranunculus and some of the butterfly variety, which is really, really pretty. They kind of look like wildflowers. That, that is a butterfly ranunculus. What else are we gonna be using? We're gonna be using some foraged flowers, some straw flowers. These are amazing, see, hence the Hello Sunshine theme. Um, these straw flowers are fresh, but they dry amazing, and they're really easy to grow, too. Um, like I said in the beginning, bearded iris, it's iris season. Look how poppin' this is. This just opened up. Um, what else are we gonna use? I have a farmer um, called Fester Cold Springs. They grow some really amazing candy, candy cane roses. These are garden roses, so you, you might have these at your house or something super similar. And of course, my fave, we're gonna be using some anthuriums. These are also called flamingo lilies. Um, you might have seen these a lot around Instagram. I love using these. These are tropical plants and they last literally forever. These just came in, shipped in from Holland. And if you take care of the flowers well enough, th this could last you like a week and a half, almost two weeks. So one of the questions um, that we got today is like, how do you take care of flowers properly? And it's really as simple as changing out the water, making sure that the scissors that you use or the shears that you use are clean um, and they're well fed. So that's like through flower food. Um, on our Instagram page, there's do it yourself flower food that only needs bleach, lemon, and distilled water so that's really it's really as simple as that taking care of your flowers is just making sure you change out that water and make sure that they're fed let me go grab my tools so for this tutorial all you're gonna need is some garden shears if you have some floral shears that's great you can even use some like kitchen scissors just make sure they're washed off um, before and after um, creating your arrangement um, and just 
year that you might use like pruning your roses or something like that. Um, the other thing that you'll need is a favorite vase. So today, since it's Hello Sunshine themed, I thought this yellow vase was bomb. Um, and if you do have access to it, I would really suggest uh, using a floral frog. This is a floral pin frog. It helps like kind of create structure. like garden chicken wire that had around the house you just cut it to shape just make sure to be careful about these edges and I will show you in just a sec how just regular chicken wire is gonna help you create like structure in an arrangement and then that way you can get these like cool shapes that you might be seeing around Instagram All right. now, let me just clear this out now, I created this tutorial um, easy enough that you can use any type of vessel that's around your house. So I just got these like really cool goblets, bomb, right? From this um, vintage store called Hello Lovely Vintage. Um, so you could use wine goblets for this tutorial. You could use like little bowls. This is like a flower vessel, but like you could get a bowl that is shaped like this. Um, or just your favorite base. So let's get into it. Now, if you'll see on our Instagram, um, we really like this like cascading, overflowing um, floral shape. So when you're creating this with me, think um, <laughs> you can think of this as like floral charcuterie. So if you've ever made like a charcuterie board, that's kind of how we're going to be making our arrangement today. Um, we like to do this just because it's like really, uh, it's like at home opulence and like let's, why not have fun right now? Um, so while we're building it, just think of that like you're building a charcuterie board, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna put the camera down just a little, just so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Perfect. All right, so what I like to do is put all of the vessels that I'm going to be using in front of me. So I kind of like know the lay of the land. I'm gonna be using a taller vessel towards the back, a little smaller one in the front, and then you'll just see in a sec that I'm gonna be taking, ah, I hope this doesn't tip over, this like bowl of fruit, and I'm going to be kind of like um, decorating the surrounding area but that's like towards the end. So always just make sure you kind of have like a, a little room in the front. Now, remember that floral frog we talked about? Or that chicken wire? Whatever base that you want to use, like want to have a lot of structure, you can put the chicken wire or the floral frog in there. I'm gonna be using the smaller one and you'll see in just a sec. So I'm just gonna put the frog in there, in here. If you have the chicken wire, all you gotta do is just squish, squish, squish. And it you'll see that the chicken wire starts to like have this like net like um, feature so that when you're putting the stems in, it'll catch the stems and it'll hold up the stems properly. So maybe most people will have chicken wire, so I'll just use it for this demonstration. Now, another question that we got asked is like, what are some of the um, seasonal flowers that I like using right now? Um, if you're in the Uni United States, uh, irises, like I said, are in season right now. Sweet peas are in season, which are these guys. This is from Japan, but there's like wild sweet peas all over the place in California. So those are in season. Um, sunflowers are starting to pop. Um, and then what's always in season, like year round, or like roses, you can always have access to that. All right. So when I'm starting an arrangement, I want to start off with like the flower that I want to show off. That is going to be this striped tulip because I, I think it's so fun. So 
tulips. Ooh. Tulips are really popular, and actually tulips will grow towards the sunlight. Um, if you leave them in a vase, uh, you'll see like overnight that you like you might have noticed that your tulips are like growing a little taller. Don't worry, it's not like voodoo or anything. That's just how they roll. So you go, you're gonna want to strip the um, the leaves of the tulips. Make sure that your shears are always clean before starting. And you're gonna wanna cut at a 45 degree angle. You're gonna wanna do this because water travels faster up um, a stem rather than if you cut it like straight horizontally. Now, um, I don't have it near me, but after putting water in your vase, you're gonna wanna put some sort of flower food in there so your arrangement lasts longer. All right, how's that looking, good? So, I love tulips just like this, but a really cool trick that you'll also see with roses in just a sec is if you reflex them, which means just peel, just like popping their outer petals a little bit, what you'll find is like a little surprise inside. And it's almost like a tulip just like becomes like a whole different flower. How pretty is that, right? So you'll find in our arrangement today, I'll be doing a lot of reflexing because like of this hello sunshine theme, I thought like everything should look like the sun. So how bomb does that look, right? Okay, <clears throat> now for my specific style, when we're placing the um, stem in the vase, I like to place it at an angle. You'll see in just a sec, but when you're placing your first stem, just go ahead and place it at an angle so that the head of the flowers kind of like facing out, right? So, that. Now what you'll find also is that I like working in like organic shapes, so we're gonna kind of build our shape um, like a backwards S. My, one of my favorite things about flowers is there's really not, like there is no wrong way to do it. So really start to just build your arrangement, however you feel best. I like um, suggesting uh, creating flower arrangements to my friends on Fridays because you'll find that flowers are really um, kind of like a meditative experience if you concentrate long enough. Um, it can really help get your mind off things. It can really soothe um, your spirits. And as you'll, you might see with me, do this here so you can see it. It becomes kind of like a trance. So what I like to do is kind of build one type of flower in like one section of the um, vase and then you'll start to build height with other types of flowers. So we're just taking the butterfly ranunculus and this kind of has like the quality of a wildflower so it's kind of like going all over the place which is really fun because what you'll find is like, it doesn't matter if the flower is droopy or anything like that, it's okay because that's what's gonna build this cool shape. Okay, so now I have my base going and now we're gonna wanna create movement. So you're gonna take something similar with this tulip, so like another one for example, and you're gonna cut it just a little bit taller than the one that's existing here, right? And since you already have flowers here, you can kind of like rest them onto each other so that they start to like kind of stack on one another. Now, I love dogwood because it's just like so pretty, this flowering branch. Um, if you don't have dog, if you don't have access to dogwood, that's okay, any flowering branch will do. And it happens a lot in like springtime where like orange blossoms will start to pop out. So yeah. So see how that's simple. You might have seen like on Instagram these like great big arrangements that have a lot of movement. See how easy this was? It's just building movement and um, shape with just like one branch. See like even one little movement. It goes from here to stay now but like you can you can pretty much tell but so sometimes things don't work out as planned but anyway there's that now 
I want to introduce like an unexpected pop. This is a Hortensia um, carnation. It's a painted carnation. Maybe I'm gonna introduce it here actually. So see what I just did? I thought I was gonna put it here, but now I'm just gonna put it on another. Go. Now, we were just talking about these sweet peas and how it's gonna give us height. We're gonna introduce this here. Ooh, what do you think about that? Put this here too. Now, you'll probably notice that I have to keep backing up <laughs> the arrangement because it's getting wider. There we go. Now you'll kind of see it better. I just fixed it. So as you'll probably notice with your arrangement, you're gonna, you're gonna move things around like I just did with this dogwood and the sweet pea, that's okay. Um, you'll come to a point where, like in the middle of your arrangement where you're like, this is whack, this looks ugly. It's fine, don't worry, you're just in the middle point. It's going to become however, how beautiful you want it to be. So there is going to be a point where you're not gonna be happy with your arrangement, that's okay. Just keep building and and know that you can keep taking things out and, and adding, it's, it's fine. All right, now that I kind of have the shape going, I wanna show you guys how to reflex this rose. So this is a cappuccino rose, bomb, right? Um, I love all of the names <laughs> that uh, farmers have given roses. So if you do get roses that still have thorns or leaves on them, that's okay, just um, go ahead and remove them. Now, if you have a rose stripper like this handy tool, you can go ahead and just strip it like this. Or if you're a little brave, sometimes if you're careful enough, you can literally just, sorry about my nails, just pop off the thorns like that. See how easy that was? Just get it at the base. Try not to um, cut yourself or poke yourself and just Pop it, pop, lock, and pop, lock, and drop it. So, clean rows, yeah. And then, just start to reflex it by peeling back the outer petals. The outer petals on a rose are called guard petals. Sometimes they're kind of, um, they're kind of old looking, that's okay, you can get rid of them. So here's the rose again. Now you're gonna want to start reflexing it. Reflexing roses is really fun and it gives a nice dimension to your arrangements and it's great, um, it works best uh, at, like with older roses. So if there are some roses at the market that look kind of meh, that's, that's totally fine, you can still get them. Just take out some of the outer petals and start to reflex it like this. Now this is gonna be one of our pops of color. We went ahead and cut it at a 45 degree angle. And where do you think we should put it? Maybe here? How's that looking? Yeah, I think so. So, we're gonna put it right here. And that is not the height that I wanted exactly. That's totally fine. It's better to cut your roses or cut your flowers a little bit longer than you um, initially want it because you can always just take out the stem and cut it. is looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and work on the lower part. Now, if you're gonna set up a centerpiece on your coffee table or your dining room table like this, um, you can go ahead and put them right next to each other. I like connecting the materials on like I like connecting the materials um, or the bases with the materials. So as you'll see, I'm going to um, kind of bring these together by using another tulip on this corner. 
so then it kind of just like brings everything together. Now the um, tool has snapped, which is great because this is a shorter base. I'm gonna connect the colors by placing them next to each other, right? So see that thorough line down there? We're gonna start to fill that. Maybe we should use this, huh? Little anthurium action going. As I said, anthuriums are super durable if you take care of them. Do not put them near like any AC because they are tropical plants. Um, so they're gonna get kind of brown if they're like too cold. So I wanted to show you guys, or show everyone, how the structure of this um, chicken wire base is gonna help you out. So this, it wouldn't stand by itself if there wasn't a chicken wire here. So the chicken wire helps because you can put the stem in between some of the crevices and it just like holds up perfectly. It like stands up straight, just like that. It's really simple. A big roll of chicken wire would cost you like $20 at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever hardware store. And that, that if you're just like a novice, um, that roll should last you like a really long time unless you're doing like events or something like, like how we do. So anyway, um, so we're gonna put the anthurium there. And now we'll introduce some of these suns, these Hello Sunshine suns, the straw flowers, maybe in here. And I wanted to keep like this kind of daisy foraged flower look for today's lesson. This is chamomile. This chamomile is probably available in almost any local grocery store. They are in season right now. So I'm just going to fill in the back with the chamomile, like so. And then we're just gonna keep filling in, right? So you get the gist. I'll fill in the back later. So once that you have both of your arrangements going, Let's go ahead and build the remaining part of the of the scene. Um, some people might tell you putting fruit with florals might be a bad idea because fruit releases gases that like kind of um, that wilt flowers faster. Yes, that is true, but like for for right now, that's okay because you might just like end up eating the fruit anyway. Um, so. What I like to do is just kind of style my arrangements. And I think yellow and red is always like, just like a bomb color combo. So I got some cherries, right? And you're just gonna kind of style it like you're taking an Instagram picture, even if you are not. Got some of these guys. Style it here. Some apri apricots. Maybe just like throw it that, right? And like I said, straw flowers are really good, just like out of water. So you could just put a little straw flower on the table like this. No. One of the reasons why um, I wanted to start under new management is I come from a floral family background. My mom was a florist, um, and for years I wasn't in the floral industry, but I, I came back to it. And we named it under new management is because we wanted to rethink the way flowers and the and events industry um, were run. We wanted to um, empower more women of color to be in leadership roles. We wanted to kind of rethink materials and rethink what the possibilities are. Some rambutan right here, so cool. So this is why you'll see us um, working with materials that might not necessarily be like status quo, but can still be super beautiful, right? So let me take this off the stand and show you what that's looking like. How is that looking, everyone? Yeah? Sorry, the sunlight is kind of 
Oh, and good morning to you, Japan. Here, I'll flip the screen so you'll see. So there still needs to be worked on just a little bit, but you can tell here that we connected both of the vases with this tulip, right? And then we started to set the scene with these fruit. Now this is a great way to kind of elevate your dining table, your coffee table um, during a shelter in place because you will probably eat this fruit for like dessert or something, but like why not set up a cool scene beforehand just so that you know you can take your mind off um maybe you're working from home or just take your mind off things and just look at something pretty for a little bit oh i forgot now maybe you're gonna want to add another little element here and you can just continue like building your table let me put it here so you can see now you can tell from this here it's kind of like, it kind of looks like a modern, um, like, like a still life kind of, where everything is just on the table, um, which I really love. So maybe this bearded, this bearded iris needs a moment. So maybe we'll just slip her in here. Right on top of the rose. I think that is looking good. What do you think? And as you can tell, like once you start moving things around, yeah, I think I like this. The possibilities are endless. So let's see. All right. Now, just to go over it um, one last time, to make this whole arrangement last longer, you're gonna want to change out the water every two to three days. Um, you're going to want to go ahead and snip. Ooh, that does not look good. You're going to want to snip the ends when you do change out the water so that um, the flower can start to drink up fresh water, that fresh water. And there you have it. It's like a really easy um, Hello Sunshine themed flower arrangement to kick off the weekend. Please let us know if you have any more questions. I just wanted to get in here and show you all of like the cool textures. Awesome. And what's great about this is, you know, maybe you make this uh, today on a Friday and you decide, you decide later that, you know, I, like I want a new scene or I've eaten all my fruit, that's okay. You can just kind of take this, for example, this little guy that you made and put it in your bathroom and then put that in your bedroom. Go ahead and eat all that fruit. It is so simple. There you have it. Um, so that was like 30 minutes. You can keep going on and on if you really want to. This could... I could easily be here for two hours just doing this whole thing. Um, so yeah, my name is Alex Foro. I am the owner of Under New Management, a woman-owned, person of color, employed floral studio based in Los Angeles. We want to remind you to bust all your dreams wide open. Anything is possible. Um, have fun with it. Uh, and yeah, if you have any more questions, we would love to hear from you over here at um, Hello Sunshine's page, over at mine, under a new MGMT. Um, I'm always online, so if you ever have questions about how your floral arrangement is doing, which flowers to pick at the grocery store, hit our, hit our line. Um, thank you so much, Hello Sunshine community, for having us, for having me just like talk for the last 30 minutes. Um, I really appreciate your time. And yeah, see you later. Bye.